hopelessly blurred and nowhere as vividly as in Night Springs. The man before you is a champion of light. He is part of a conflict between darkness and light that is both ancient and eternal. He is chasing a dangerous quarry, the Herald of Darkness. <laughs> His evil doppelganger, known only as Mr. Scratch. Maybe, but what are you gonna do then? By then, I'll have had my hands on everything you love. has been brutally spat out from the darkness that surrounds the shores of our reality. He has come to fight a decisive battle in Night Springs. that again. In another life, the man was a writer. He still practices that art, forging weapons of war out of ideas. But the violent currents that brought him here have scattered the pages he has written. My name is Alan Wake, and I'm a writer. I didn't become one overnight. Like most writers, I struggled with it. A short story here, an article there. Then I got lucky and spent a year as a staff writer on the Night Springs TV show. It wasn't the great American novel of my fantasies, but it taught me discipline and craft, and the difference between wanting to be a writer and actually writing.
The lights of the motel promise safety. The man senses that the solution to his predicament begins there. Somewhere within the Earth, space itself has been pierced, and from dark depths runs a steady flow of monsters. The man recognizes the hand of his evil double in this. He knows he must put an end to this madness. Stay here now. It's you. There. You remember me, right? Emma? Emma Sloan? I think you might have something that belongs to me. Really? A typewritten page? Oh, yeah, that's weird. I, I did find a page like that. I don't even know where it came from. It was all this weird stuff about the oil derrick and a satellite. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Oh, well, I don't know how you knew I had it, but I, I guess it's yours. Listen, what's this all about? There are these really creepy guys hanging around the oil derricks. There's something really weird about them. They're dangerous. I'm going to deal with them. Try to stay out of their sight, OK? And stay in the light. They hate the light. The Champion of Light recognizes the page he got from the woman. It is a weapon of his own design, custom engineered to destroy the dark portal. If he recreates the conditions of the page, a great power will be unleashed. Well, here you are, about to enjoy another cool Arizona night with me, Eddie Rodman, the host with the boast. Hey, any of you guys remember Old Gods of Asgard? <laughs> Man, I actually saw them twice back in the 70s. I was just a kid then, but my dad worked at this club, and he'd sneak me in to see bands all the time. You know how it is. Talk about an education. Anyway, great band, a couple of great albums, solid fan base, and then they kind of dropped off the face of the earth. Well, now, almost four decades later, they're making a comeback. Well, let me tell you, these boys have seen a lot of road. There's some serious rock and roll veterans, because they weren't too young even back in the day. Well, now I've got Odin and Tor Anderson, two of the original old gods, in the studio with me, along with their manager, Barry Wheeler. Nice to have you guys here. Oh, hey, great to be here, Eddie. Yeah, hey. Hello. Now, boys, let me just come around and say this, all right? Spring chickens, you ain't. <laughs> I mean, you guys, you make the stones look young. <laughs> Who you calling old? <laughs> now, your last album was 1978, In the Valley of My Shadow. And then you stopped playing all together. Obviously. 
me that they still got it. So I figured, hey, let's now, make Barry, some music, right? Now, Barry, you were a right? agent went before this, right? Hell, this isn't gonna be good. Is this on? How can you tell? I'm sorry, I'm not very good with gadgets. Ah, that's more like it. I'll be right with you. I just gotta do this one thing. I like it quiet. I bet you're wondering why this is happening. Why am I doing all this? Why am I so hell-bent on ruining your life? You're cramping my style. You've got money, fame, everything you could want. But you don't know what to do with it. I do. I'm getting all the things you never had the balls to go for. Having more fun, too. <laughs> do you know the real difference between us? I'm not afraid to be the center of attention. This poor slob's just collateral damage, really. I mean, I made some information out of him earlier. But this part? This is just for kicks. That's one thing down. The reality we take for granted is softer, more adaptable than we think. Under correct conditions, you can reshape it, turn it into almost anything you want. When it happens, almost nobody notices. It's not that we forget, it's that after the change, there's nothing to remember. Only those who have been directly touched by the powers that can shift reality are aware of the changes. Many are driven mad by it, 
others can cope. I'm one of those people, and I know how to wield that power to rewrite reality. At the oil derrick, the wheel had been jammed in place and turned until the oil gurgled and flowed thick and flammable. The warning lights were blinking in a fast rhythm, bright and steady, powered by the battery. The Kasabian CD was playing in the boom box, all distorted guitars and intense beat. High above, some piece of orbital junk or another collided with the satellite, knocking it radically off course. Trailing debris, it screamed down from the skies at an impossibly steep angle. All that high-tech engineering reduced to nothing more than a bullet that would destroy whatever it hit. itself in two to avoid the hated light. It becomes weaker, but more numerous. Such is the arithmetic of horror. That was just messed up. Something tells me I'm really gonna need the extra firepower. That's two. Just one more to go. Some of the Taken aren't protected by the darkness like their comrades. Instead, their aversion to light is so extreme that they literally split into two when they encounter strong light. It leaves the two halves weaker, but of course, their strength in numbers. It's a disturbing development. The dark presence I faced two years ago was powerful, but it didn't have much in the way of imagination. Clearly, the same cannot be said of Mr. That's everything. The man has found the battery, but it is empty. It will need to be recharged. I guess it's about time I went full auto.
I need this battery charged. No problem. Here you go. Thanks. Listen, I don't know what's gonna happen exactly when I do this. My memory's a little hazy. I don't even know what that means. All I'm saying is you don't want to come anywhere near the oil field, all right? This thing could get out of hand. In the middle of highly flammable materials. Great. I'll do my best to contain it. Just please don't turn out to be some kind of crazy terrorist guy, okay? Okay, I'm gonna go now. Wish me luck. Wait a sec, I want to ask you about something first. What did you mean with that my memories a little hazy thing? I had a pretty rough time coming here. It was like being caught in a tsunami. I blacked out for a while. It's hard to explain. There's a, a barrier of sorts that I had to break through. I was lucky to make it here with my wits as intact as they are. So you might have brain damage, you're about to do great things with a magic piece of paper, and you came here from another dimension? No, I'm from New York. I, I was just visiting another dimension. Oh, yeah, okay. My bad. It's a little sad how many problems you can solve with Buckshot.
Time to make some serious changes. Trick, messing with